when we did so again, uh, Jenny May ten a rawati que. Uh, we oh, couldn't get enough of you. We wanted to play your image again for a second time. <laughs> it was those dance moves, too. You know, it was those dance moves. Um, I'm very embarrassed by that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ko te ngako fakaiti te nei uh, Jenny May emi hia tu nei kia koe. Uh, I fakawate mai a koe te nei haora o te po. Uh, we know you get up early for breakfast in the morning, not just the kai but the TV show. Um, so to have you here with us at this time of the night um, to pre-record our kaupapa uh, in support of our Te Rua Korotangi online conference is a huge honour. Nō reira, e reira nei ngā mihi me te aroha nui ki a koe. Um, ko te mahi tuatahi, uh, he, whaka, he āta whakatūtaki i a koe ki te iwi e whakarungoana e mātaki taki ana. Nō reira, tēnā koa, hei te hoa, ko ai koe, nō hea koe. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe. Uh, nei rā te mihi atu ki a koe, uh, nō koe te waimari e ki te hono atu ki tēnei kaupapa. Um, me whakarāpa poto e taku uh, pepeha ki te taho uh, tōku māma no Ngāti Kahu, uh, ko te whānau Larkins, uh, ki te taha o tōku pāpa uh, no Ngāti Manio poto, ko te whānau Rauputu me te whānau Coffin. Um, I tupua ke hau i te taone nui i Pio Pio. Um, Engari, e noho ana hau ki tāme ki makaurau i tēnei wā. Uh, nō reira, ai, tēnā koutou katoa. Wo well, hei te uri o Ngāti Kahu me Ngāti Mania Poto. Uh, no mai haere mai ki te papa kore o te kōtangi. Um, really awesome to have you here with us. Um, Thank you. And we're so honoured actually that you made yourself available to Tautoko the kaupapa. Um, we're all about inspiring people um, to continue uh, on the journey of learning te reo Māori. Uh, your journey is nothing short of inspiring. Um, but of course, all journeys start somewhere. So uh, I guess before we get into um, the mahi that you're doing today and the real Māori journey that you're on now, if we take a step back, um, when you were at Kura, because of course the audience say for Te Rua Korotangi is predominantly teachers and kayako Fano communities that are actively working in the education sector, what was the education system like uh, when you were at Kura and how did Te Reo Māori fit uh, into your learning when you were at Kura? Um, you, it's, yeah. Um, sorry for my hesitant start, but I didn't actually think um, going back to my childhood would be I don't know, raise whatever um, these emotions are, but it was pretty much non-existent. Um, we had a kapahaka group, which was miharo, um, and that from primary school um, through to uh, college, because at Pio Pio, there was just primary and then you went straight to college. And the only meaningful representation of of who I felt I was, was through kapahaka. And so when I was uh, learning waiata, when I was learning kupu, um, when I was performing on stage, it felt I was in the right place, that my spirit, my waiata was settled, and that I felt like it was me. For every other part of being Māori within my kura, there was nothing. There was nothing, no representation of um, who I was, who I aspired to be. Um, not only not standing in front of me, but the language was non-existent um, with my teachers. Yeah, I, I think it's so. Here's the interesting thing for me is that since starting on uh, breakfast and being in a space of interviewing people, um, I have gone into interviews which I've thought being not related at all as to how I grew up and the surroundings that I grew up in. And all of a sudden, I get these 
overwhelming like this and I kind of go I don't know where that's coming from but there was something missing um, when I was growing up I didn't feel worthy um, because being Māori wasn't necessarily something that was viewed as positive growing up in a small town um, of largely Pākehā um, and my parents were I guess that had it drummed into them, right? That in order to get through in this world, you have to walk in a Pākehā world. So my Māoriness was pushed to the side and my grandfather would speak to me in Te Reo Māori and I didn't understand him and I felt really ashamed that I didn't understand him. Um, and so for me, that was the extent growing up in, in Pio Pio and going to school there was nothing around me that made me proud. Be I had teachers that influenced me in other ways, um, but in terms of you know uh, who I was as a Maori, there was never. Um, oh, hang on! Apart from when we had visitors come, and then they threw the kapahaka group out there, and you had to do a karanga or whatever. I had no idea what I was doing. But I, at that point in time, that's when I felt really special to be Māori because I knew that that was a really special thing to be able to do was to uh, our manu when they came to school grounds. But outside of that, there was no... Um, there was no words of inspiration or uh, I wasn't seen. The Māori part of me wasn't seen and I was desperate for it to be seen but not really understanding uh, what was missing what was going on um, but now that you know again I reflect back on the interviews that I do and I and I look back on in my schooling and I go you know I don't want my boys to grow up like that mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want them to experience that 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 part of them, this amazing, beautiful, uh, humble um, side of them, is not recognised. Um, I don't want them to feel the mamai that I I felt when I was growing up, but I didn't know what it was. Anyway, I didn't expect that to go there, but here we go. <laughs> We're letting yeah. the wild take us. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to talk about because even when I was learning te reo, I felt dumb because I felt like I should know it and I didn't know it. Mm. And, and, you know, that for, for, for mum, their own language, there is so much hurt mamai that is there and being able to unpack that finally and just go there's so much hurt this during colonization and what happened to us and the language beaten out of us the language taken away from us um and now having it and albeit you know i'd like to know more and learn more but having it and knowing its value to me as a person and where and how I see myself. Um, and I think back to those days at school when I did feel dumb. And, you know, there are times when I still feel that way. But just understanding that. And if I'd understood that back then, then, you know, maybe it wouldn't have hurt so much. I don't know. I, I, I don't know whether it would or, or wouldn't have. But it was actually a really traumatizing part to the point where I, I don't want to learn it anymore. It's it just it hurts too deep, and I don't know why, and I'm not connecting with it, and I should know because that's who I am. Um, yeah. So when yeah. I guess when did you then make the decision to learn to do Maori? Um, so it never left me, um, if I can say that. So throughout after school, I mean, I got, you know, life takes over and there was, 
uh, work and um, playing international sport. But along that entire journey, I knew that there was something missing. And I remember at TVNZ, um, they had made a decision that the station I was working for at the time, TVNZ 7, they were going to uh, close it down. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to allow um, this organisation to dictate what it looks like. And a very good friend of mine, um, Billy Joe Ropiha, had Takiura the year before me and she would come mm. into, the, to, into the studio at TVNZ and be like oh my god sister this is what I learned today and her excitement and her enthusiasm I was so jealous of what she was doing and what she was learning because it was exactly what I wanted to do um, and when I saw that and I thought wow within one year I could potentially be total immersion, I could, or a total immersion for the year, but potentially I could come out and I could speak te reo Māori. And for me, I was just blown away that that could even be a possibility. And so at that point, I don't know, I had no responsibilities. Uh, um, you know, I didn't have children, I didn't have a partner, and I just thought, if not now, when? And so I jumped in head first, as people who know me will know that I tend to do. And... I signed myself up for Takiura and off I went. And I was still working, so I still had to pay the bills. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be able to afford to do it five days a week, Monday to Friday, nine till three, and then work uh, Friday, Saturdays, and then wherever else I could fit work in and amongst my um, calendar. Uh, so, yeah, it was actually work that kind of forced my hand. Grateful for. Um, but... Matt was bloody hard. It was really, really hard. I reckon it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, hands down. And when I and you know, I reflect back on what I talked about about the trauma, um, feeling like I should know it, the imposter syndrome, all of that sort of stuff started to come out. You know, and I remember my dad saying to me, because at the time I was working at Māori Television as well, and I was reading a script, I was reading the auto cue. And so it was written for me, and it was either written by Stacey Morrison or Scotty Morrison. And so, you know, you know, Tikarawatu, so you knew it was right, but it was, you know, that, as basic as they could possibly do it for me. But, you know, the uh, intonation, you know, when, you, when you're supposed to go up and down at the right place, oh, well, I was all over the place. So, you know, anybody who was a real speaker was going, oh, she didn't even know what she's talking about. But I remember my father saying to me, and because me and my heads a lot, I remember him saying to me, let's go on Māori television and pretend to speak Māori. And... I'll never forget that. And at the time, I was just like, oh, yeah, whatever, Dad. Until, um, and here, at this is here, what I'm talking about. Now I'm starting to divert off into other corridor. Being in Raglan one day and going to a full square store, and this queer came up to me and she started speaking to me in Te Reo Māori. And I remember putting, looking at her, and I had no idea what she was saying. And in my head, I'm going, well, she's obviously seen me on TV speaking Te Reo Māori. And so for her, it was a natural thing just to speak to me mm. that I knew how to speak and I understood it. She walked away and I put my head down and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. But this young boy who was working in the store at the time said to me, did you understand what she said to you? And I looked at him and I said, no, I didn't. And I had tears in my eyes. And he told me what she'd said. And she just, yeah, she said some very complimentary things about me. And I remember walking out getting into the car and bursting into tears and going, this is what my father was trying to tell me right from the outset. Um, and so I've forgotten what the question is. But anyway, it was about six or seven years ago that I went to learn. Te Reo Māori. It was. It was about, you know, when you started your Te Reo Māori learn, uh, journey, um, I guess since going on that journey over the past six or seven years, as you say, and in light you know, in spite of the challenges in light of where you came from and where you're at now, actually, what has Te Reo done for you? How has it enriched your lives and the lives of your whānau? Um, it's hard to, to put into words um, the impact that it's had on me, 
the impact that it has had on my whanau, the impact that it had on the relationship between my dad and I, um, the impact that it is now starting to have on my nieces and my nephews. I guess for me, on a personal level, with my dad, um, he went to university when I was growing up, when I was in secondary school. My dad was doing uh, night classes in Te Kwiti, and he would go um, once a week to his classes. And I didn't know where he was going. I didn't know what he was doing. I wasn't even interested in what he was doing. And it took him 10 years to learn his own language. Because um, when he grew up, his... His dad spoke te reo, but he never, he stopped talking to his children in te reo because, hey, Pākehā world, um, et cetera, et cetera. His mother passed away when she was very young. She only spoke te reo Māori in the house. She was in her early 40s when she passed away. So whilst they understood it and there was bits and pieces around, he had a real grasp on it. So he went and learned over this 10-year period, um, learning his own language and so part of the journey for me um, with learning te reo was reconnecting, reconnecting, I was always connected to my dad but connecting with him on a different level. Um, he would come to my place when I was learning and you know we'd sit there and I'd be trying to have a pigeon conversation with him in te reo Māori and English and going all over the place and then I would stop because I was too afraid to say it wrong. And he would just encourage me, just say the English word for it and you can figure out what that means. Just keep, you know, try and keep the flow going. And so that there was a depth to our connection that I didn't mm. know was missing um, mm. until I went on that journey. And then um, the conversations that we would have um, once I'd, you know, got to the to the end part of that part of my journey. And, you know, I, I lost my dad about three years ago, and I'm forever grateful that we were able to have those conversations in our language. I always remember my dad, though, he would always, because my mum, despite her being uh, Māori on her dad's side, she doesn't understand the real. And mm. he would always say to me, uh, you know, you need to we need to translate what we're saying because we don't want to exclude anybody from our conversation, which I'm really, really grateful for that little lesson that he taught me. And I guess particularly in the role that I'm in, sometimes it would be easy just to kind of go off on our own little tangents. But actually what my what my desire is is to take people along on the journey is to, to include them so that they understand what we're talking about. I don't want people to feel like like I did, like I was on the outside and wanting to be on the inside i want doesn't doesn't matter who you are where you're from i, I want you to feel the beauty of um of our language so on a personal note a changed relationship with my dad uh it changed how i felt about myself i always walked around on the marae wherever there was a maori sitting with my head down because i didn't want anybody to speak to me because i was too afraid that i didn't understand what they were saying or i couldn't respond in the most appropriate way or i would say something wrong um and then with my boys, I guess just what I reflected on earlier, I don't, I don't want them to grow up like how I did and feeling ashamed of who they are, that, that Māori side of them. I want them, the Māori and Pākehā, I want them to be able to stand strong in both worlds uh, and not feel accepted in just one of them, but actually feel accepted um, within both of them. And then I've got my nieces and nephews now that have um, decided that they want to learn te reo Māori and so I'm doing uh, once a week online stuff um, with them on a Sunday evening when it suits, you know, all of their schedules. They're dotted around the motu. And they want that for their children as well. What they see I have in terms of uh, the real with the boys and their understanding and they, they value in that. And the thing, we haven't seen it before in our whanau, in my immediate no, we haven't seen that. It hasn't been role modelled, and not for any fault of anyone's. It was just the decisions that our tupuna made that they felt was best for us, for the future generations. 
Um, but I feel privileged to be in that space where I can role model that for for our whānau. Yeah. See, once again, I just rattle on. You need to run. No, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Actually, I feel honoured. I'm the one that's um, in the hot seat asking you questions because usually every morning it's the other way around. You asking other guests questions. <laughs> just following on from what you've said, though. True story. Um, you know, your story has highlighted the importance of te reo to you as a Māori of Maniapoto and Ngāti Kahu mm. descent. I want to talk to you now about your thoughts around the relevance of te reo Māori to not just Māori, but all New Zealanders, Māori and non-Māori. I mean, it's... I, I, I think about the relevance of the question and then I think about, well, it is relevant because it is the native real. Um, but, but I guess in the context in which we're talking in, um, it is understanding that the connection of the language to how we see ourselves, how we feel about ourselves. I mean, you speak to non, a non-Māori and they will tell you when they hear it, uh, when they're around it, uh, they can feel it and they ha they resonate with it, even if they don't understand, uh, because that's the impact that the language has on them. But I guess, I guess for me, it is about not necessarily its, its relevance, but its significance and its importance, and, and, and its importance to us. Māori, and again, I don't speak for all Māori, and I'm very clear about that when I do these questions because, you know, we all know we've all been raised differently um, and our tūpuna saw things differently. Um, and so for me, it's about the impact that it has on us as individuals because again i can't speak on behalf of of everyone but from my point of view when i know that you see me um how that makes me feel again i reflect back on my days it could have if only someone had seen me um perhaps i would have thought of myself differently um perhaps i wouldn't have been and again you know, my father, we have, we we have some responsibility in that, but I don't know what sort of person I may have been in school had I been seen. And being seen for me um, was about hearing my language, um, knowing that it is important, and that somebody. Uh, in front of me sees that and understand that I don't know what sort of kid I could have been I don't know what sort of kid some of my mates could have been that ended up down the wrong track because you know they they had no real connection or belief um, or pride in who they were and for me I believe that that was a lot due to feeling lost not feeling who they were or who they are um, and I always I always see myself as one of the lucky ones to get out and have done what I've done and I know that has a lot to do with my whānau but you know I see things um, uh, like Rob Ruha um, and you know their way out to 35 and what he's doing with the youth there and I just it blows my mind because I think of all us kids when we used to hang out all together and I look at a video like that and I go, man, you know, I just wish that we had that, that somebody showed us that early we're relevant um, and that there is something for us to be proud of. Um, I love I love that. I love what uh, one of my whanaunga, the rookie, is doing back in Maniapoto. All that stuff is just saying, hey, I see you. Um, and yeah, 
there's so much to be proud of so much to be proud of yeah and again i don't know uh being seen in my in my school days how that could have impacted on me but i know that it it didn't have a it had the negative impact on me in terms of how i felt about myself well that's deep okay. no no well, i i i guess the question was more about um um encouraging oh did i not even, I didn't even answer the, the question did i no you did you did it was about relevance and you talked about the importance and significance of te reo maori i guess um the the question was also about encouraging no, non-maori in particular is, yeah and, it, and i guess that the answer to that then is how relevant do you see the maori for your students to to be a reflection of those in your classroom, to be a reflection of the country that we live in. What is the relevance for you? And I think everybody has to go on their own journey themselves because I can't sit here and tell you, well, you know, this is why it should be relevant to you, etc. And there are other people that can that can probably uh, say that better than I can. But for me, I I, I kind of, you know, if, if, if anything, if I can say, if I was seen, and what I mean by being seen is if I'd heard my language, if I was encouraged to be me, to um, maybe, yeah, maybe that sense of pride in who I was, I would have been a different student. I'll never know that, but all I can express is how I felt when I was in when I was in school. And also the big thing for me too, and I always when I go into a classroom to speak to kids, when I ask their name, I want to get it right in the first instance. But also asking some kids, you know, where's that name from? And knowing the importance of someone's name and that it be a ancestor, and then just making that connection with those kids. Something as simple as that says that you see me because the fact that you're even asking me about my name says that you know that there's a relevance in that. Um, yeah, anyway. No, I, I, I want to pick up on that. So, you know, earlier you talked about um feeling like an imposter or the imposter syndrome yes. and i know that there are oh. people both maori and non-maori non-maori um, particularly who you know they're hungry for te reo they're keen to get behind it they're keen to share it but inside they're scared of stuffing things up or i mean what what words of encouragement would you have for people that um are in the shoes that you were in there's two really important parts to that. And I think the first one is we can all say give it a go, right? We can all say, um, you know, go you because you're giving it a go. And there are many of us who absolutely believe that. But my word of caution is make sure you're in an environment where you feel safe because I've been shut down. I've been shut down before and I went right back into my shell because I didn't understand what was being said to me and the response that I got was quite a jarring one. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that my desire to learn was bigger than that moment, but it did, I did retreat for a little bit. And I, I guess the big thing is, yeah, is that just make sure you're in a safe environment and that you feel okay um, whether you, you know, whether you're talking with someone that you know, um, before, and you might, you might disagree with me actually, Kingy, on this one, but before you kind of go out and then start, you know, kind of throwing words like, okay, so on our show, I, I love it when I have guests that go, you know, I'll go, uh, morena. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. And they'll go, oh, Morena, Morena, Jenny May. And in my heart, you know, I'm doing a fist pump because I'm going, wow, we're on national television and you feel safe enough uh, in my company that it's okay to say, even though you stuffed it up, uh, gave it a go. And I love that. I absolutely love that. And I praise it. Um, but I, yeah, I, I guess um, without scaring people, it's just it's just making sure you you are when you're when you're speaking while you're getting your confidence up that you are around people that you that you trust 
and know that they will, you know, that they have permission to gently correct you um, if if you're not saying it right or um, you feel safe enough to be able to ask questions about, you know, how do I say this? In this context, how do I say this? Um, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing I would caution people about is don't assume that every Māori can speak te reo Māori. Um, <laughs> there is so much uh, pain uh, for some Māori when uh, non-Māori, you know, show up and then they start speaking te reo because they've, you know, learnt a whole lot of stuff because the pain and hurt that you might be putting on uh, uh, someone who is Māori that can't speak the language, um, that they are looking at somebody who knows their deal and they don't. So there's a lot of shame in that. So the assumption, don't be, don't assume that every Māori can speak. Um, and I know that you want to use the deal and, you know, you might be really excited about it, but just be aware of that, about how that actually might make Māori in your presence feel. Um, and I guess that comes down to pepeha as well, you know, asking your students, you know, you know, we hear pepeha, you know, you know, you're Māori, kui, no reira, you know, you're a Māori student, so, you know, you know, what would you put in this? Some of them might not know, mm. and actually their parents might not even know. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I, that's all. I'd just be very mindful of those of those things because there are many of us who would love to know the real, uh, but we don't have it. There are many of us who don't know some parts of our whakapapa. Um, yeah, so just don't assume that that knowledge is already there for Māori and just be cautious about the way that you um, you approach it, I guess. Did I say that kindly? Yeah. And, and, you know, to your question around what my thoughts are, they're, they, they're exactly the same as yours. Um, I think, you know, we have a job to make people, in order for te reo to be, to be accepted, we have to also allow um, a level of comfort for people to share um, oh. whether, whether, whether they're, what they're sharing is is correct or is being pronounced correctly i think um having that degree of flexibility to actually make people comfortable about speaking te reo maori is certainly a big part of of te reka maurua and te rua korotangi so it, you, the sentiments reflect um those of us that are leading this program so it's awesome we're all on the same page to um yeah. i i am mindful of time um, oh yes yeah, sorry no, 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 it's perfect. You've kind of answered every question, but now I kind of want to get personal with you. Not that we haven't already done yeah, so. I was but say, I'm, have we? Have we already? Yeah, not, that I, not that we haven't already done so, but I, I want us, I want you to take us on a journey into your whare. What has Te Reo done for you in the household with your tamariki and with your hoatane? Oh. What, is, what are some awesome experiences you've had with Te Reo or through Te Reo with your tamariki and with your with your whanau? Oh, you know, to be fair, it has been a struggle with my sons. Um, I don't think the little buggers know how lucky they are to have someone speaking them twenty speaking to them twenty four seven um, in Te Reo Māori. Um, I know you want me to tell you the good stuff, and there's there's lots of good stuff in terms of. Um, so the boys go to uh, Kura and Manurewa. Um, but because most of the language in our household, so my husband's, um, my mother and father-in-law live with us as well, uh, he Pākehā Rāiwa, um, and their sisters um, are with us as well, but everybody speaks uh, Pākehā, and I'm the only one in the household that speaks Te Reo Māori, although my husband is picking up, he wants to learn, and he's been doing courses in and out of night classes, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's beautiful when my sons actually uh, speak, when they when they decide to call it all back to me in Te Reo Māori, which isn't always uh, the case with them. They're very um, strong-minded and they will speak when they want to speak. But being in this lockdown has been really interesting because I've been on Zui <clears throat> every single day with their kayako. And so I've been able to hear them interacting more with the kayako, i te reo Māori, in Māori, 
And seriously, there are times when I'm in tears uh, mm. because I can't believe because they don't speak to me like that. And I just mm. go, oh, my God, it's all been worth it. Yeah. All the pain, all the stress along the way. You know, I can see it to fruition. I can see them um, oh, just using it. It's just a beautiful thing. But here's an interesting thing that I didn't think that I would, and what I've learned along this journey with my sons is, so I speak te reo to them. When they have friends come over, they um, they don't speak te reo, their friends, but I continue to speak te reo to the boys because I think I'm doing the right thing, right? But actually they turn around and said to me, Mama, why do you only, why do you speak te reo to us in front of our friends? And what I figured out was that they didn't want to be seen as different. It wasn't that they didn't value their deal, but they were concerned too that their friends didn't actually understand. And mm -hmm. so I learned, ah, okay, so I can still speak to Reo Māori, but translate it straight after. And so that was a bit of a, a, a learning thing for me. Anyway, I threw my toys out of the cot one day and I just went, right, because they were going, you know, talking back to me in English. And I thought, this is a waste of time. So I said, right, that's it. Not speaking te reo Māori anymore, I'm going to speak in English. And I reckon it lasted maybe half an hour. And they started freaking out and going, oh, Mama, you sound funny. You sound <laughs> funny when you're talking uh, Pākehā. I don't, I don't like it. I said, oh, okay, so you want me to start just speaking to you in te reo Māori again? And they were like, yeah, yeah, you sound funny. You sound funny in English. So that was a win-win for me as well. But, you know, I guess I never grew up in a home where te reo was freely spoken. And again, for me, that's my gift to my sons. Mm -hmm. They don't see it in this moment. They might not see it, you know, in the next five or 10 years, but at some point, um, you know, they'll realize the power of um, knowing and understanding their own, their own real. So, you know, we've had moments um, in our, in our whare, uh, but they're, yeah, my, my, as I say, my boys will choose when and how if they will speak te reo. And I don't want to force it. I don't want to force them to speak back to me. I just want it to be a natural progression for them where, and you see it, sometimes they'll just go straight into Māori and they're not even thinking about it. Mm. Um, those are moments that I, yeah, that I really cherish. The corridor tonight has been full of, of advice and guidance and words of encouragement, I guess just to kind of bring things to a close. Um, you know, in, in Te Reka Maurua, Te Ahu o Te Reo, Te Rua Korotangi, we use the word whakahihiri, which means to inspire. What words of inspiration do you have for the teachers and the communities that are here with us and actively working in our schools, our kohanga reoa, our ECEs? What, what words of inspiration do you have for them to encourage them to continue on this journey of learning te reo Māori? Yeah. Ugh. I always find these moments hard because um, people will resonate with different things. Um, but I guess to, to stay with the theme of what I've been talking about um, tonight is that you matter and what you say and what you do matters mm. and not to underestimate, I'm not assuming that you, that you do, but not to underestimate the power that you have just by the words that you speak over um, our children um, or in anyone's in anyone's presence and again i reflect back and if only i had been seen maybe that journey through school would have been somewhat easier in some way mm. yeah those were mean as inspiring words to end this call <laughs> on. So he meant oh, <laughs> that ended it with a bang, bang, oh, bang, wow. bang. As banging as that cunny cunny that we saw in the video. <laughs> which, whatever. <laughs> Rob would have loved that TikTok, I can tell you that now. Um, <laughs> look, on behalf of the team at Tukwara, 
the facilitators of Te Rua Korotangi and, and also those of Te Reka Mauroa. I just want to extend a huge thank you. Um, and we also send to you our aroha and our best wishes because, of course, the journey really, it's kind of only just begun, hasn't it? There's still a lot more um, that lies ahead of you, that lies ahead of all of us. Um, but we're really grateful for the time uh, that you've spent sharing your story with us. Norera, kua hau tenei, he hoa aroha no, engari he waha kōrero anō hoki mō mātou mō te tīma whakatui tenei hui e tuku nei i ākwe i runga i ngā mihi me te aroha nui, hei te uri o Ngāti Kahu, o Ngāti Mangia Poto. Ngā manā ki tanga ki ākwe, mā i hoa e tiaki tau hairinga atu me tau hairinga mai. Tēnā koe, tēnā tāua o tira e te iwi e, tēnā tātaka toa. Jenny May Clarkson, everybody. Jenny May Clarkson.